Catch. She's gonna bring There'll be no safety nets from the SNP as we enter a critical week for Boris Johnson's premiership. They've said they'll vote against any deal and they want opposition parties to join them and vote him out of office. After identifying a pathway to an agreement with the Irish Taoiseach late last week, Boris Johnson told his cabinet today there's still a significant amount of work to do. But there are intensive talks now ahead of a summit of EU leaders on Thursday. Details are scarce, but the DUP have said again they won't tolerate Northern Ireland remaining in the EU customs union. A leading Brexiteer who used to say he took his lead from the DUP on matters of the union, today acknowledged he may have to eat his words. I trust Boris Johnson to ensure that the relationship the UK has with the European Union is one where, where we are not a vassal state. And that is the point that we are leading towards in all these discussions, and I'm very keen that we should succeed in getting to. My clear message to the Labour Party and to the Liberal Democrats is this. The SNP is not in the business of propping up a Tory government, nor should you be. As the SNP gathers in Aberdeen, there's no consensus about the next move among opposition leaders. The only option that truly puts a stop to this chaos is to call a general election. Well, it's set to be a huge week ahead for the Prime Minister, but just as crucial for the opposition parties too. If Boris Johnson brings back a Brexit deal, can those who want to stop him, and they're trying to force the issue here today, coalesce around a coherent plan. There's distance tonight between the SNP and growing momentum among leading Labour figures to try and put any Boris Johnson deal to a referendum before a general election. I know that many colleagues are of a similar opinion to me. They've been on a journey. They weren't in favour of a referendum to start off with, but now we realise that it has to be put before the people. Now, that's the case if we're in a general election and Labour renegotiates a deal. And equally, I think it should be the position if we're faced with a deal that's passed through the Commons by an unelected Tory Prime Minister that could potentially be damaging for our economy. It does have wide support within the Labour Party. So a pre-election referendum on a Boris Johnson deal. Whatever pressure he's under from senior colleagues, it wasn't something Jeremy Corbyn was willing to endorse. We have to get a deal that we can agree on if possible, and the Labour position is that we would take this to a public vote uh, under a Labour government, which within three months we would hope to reach agreement with the European Union. We leave that to be possible along the lines that we've set out, and within six months hold a referendum. Tomorrow, Boris Johnson will have his Queen's speech, laying out his government's legislative agenda despite a majority of minus 43. Opponents believe it's a ploy to promote his election priorities. Ahead of a special sitting of Parliament on Saturday, though, the real action may well be deep in the bowels of Brussels. The EU's chief negotiator saying this evening talks with the UK had been constructive, but a lot of work remains to be done. Kieran Jenkins reporting. Earlier I sat down with Scotland's First Minister and leader of the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon. I asked her, does she have any sense of what Boris Johnson's deal amounts to? Any deal that is likely to emerge, given Boris Johnson's red lines and his starting point, is not going to be in Scotland's interests. It will take us out of the EU, the single market, the customs union, all against our will. What if he comes back and says, look, here's the deal, whatever it is, and it will be subject to a confirmatory uh, referendum. Well, look, um, I've said I support a referendum uh, and I would vote, remain in that referendum. I would campaign for remain in that referendum. And I should say, I don't rule anything out. This is such a mess that I think responsible leaders have to look at all options. But for the last number of weeks, I've thought the sensible thing for the opposition to do would be to unite behind a vote of no confidence, then an interim government arrangement to secure an extension uh, that would last for a very short period of time and then move to a general election as quickly as possible. So have you possible. talked to Jeremy Corbyn recently? Uh, the SNP have been talking to Jeremy Corbyn for quite some time. Uh, Ian Blackford uh, principally is leading those nego negotiations for uh, the SNP. I, I make no bones about the fact that I have been frustrated, Ian has been frustrated in the last couple of weeks, about the seeming inability of Labour and the Liberals in particular to put their differences to one side and come together behind a plan. I guess I suspect that there is 
a feeling in Labour and the Liberals that they don't really want an election right now. But I, I, I think in a democracy, you can try to constrain a prime minister. You could try to work around a prime minister. But if you want to fundamentally change the direction he's trying to go in, you have to be prepared to take him on in an election and beat him. And I'm prepared to do that in Scotland. And I think others have to be prepared to step up to that challenge. You're a Remainer. Which is more important to you, stopping Brexit or independence for Scotland? It's, it's not an either or, because independence for Scotland means we never end up in a position where we're facing things like being taken out of the EU against our will. We're in charge of these decisions. We, uh, so independence for me is the most important thing because it means on Brexit, on anything else, Scotland's in charge of our own destiny. But you wouldn't regret. automatically be in Europe That's, if well, you were if, independent. Well, there is an appetite to see Scotland in the EU and I think there would be open arms. So of course there would be a process. Would there really? Because yes, think do. of all those other people who think there are open arms. Think of the Basques, think of the, the, yeah. the Catalans, for sure. example. Spain has never ever said, and has been very careful not to say that they would veto uh, the, an independent Scotland being in the EU. What they have said is that they would you know, want to be sure that that was a process that had been done legally and constitutionally. So. You know, I have no doubt that Scotland would be welcomed into the EU. Uh, don't you think that the last three years have actually taught us that constitutional upheaval is both damaging and very, very divisive? Have you ever known Britain in the condition it's now? No, but I don't, I, I don't think it takes you to that conclusion. So Brexit is unique and unprecedented. Countries becoming independent is not. You know, there have been many, many countries just since the Second World War that have become independent. Many have become independent from uh, the UK. What went wrong in Brexit, in my view, was not that it was constitutional change that was proposed. It was, you know, I was going to say proposed on the back of a fag packet, but actually proposed on the side of a bus. There was no detail, there was no grown-up, mature discussion about the implications, the trade-offs, the compromises that would have to be made after a vote for Brexit. A couple of domestic mm. issues. Life expectancy in Scotland is now the worst in the United Kingdom and getting worse. Why and why can't you combat well, that? Firstly, uh, that's not a, a new thing. Life expectancy has lied to the UK for generations. Uh, and I think if memory says me still correctly, worse. across the UK, we're seeing a slight peg back in life after many years of improvement. So these challenges are not new in Scotland. Actually, if you look at many of the actions we are taking in health, shifting towards a much more preventative approach to healthcare, uh, cancer survival uh, and uh, mortality in our hospitals, all of these things are going in the right direction. And then you get that glaring figure of a thousand yeah. deaths mm -hmm. from drugs which is shattering and one wonders it's, why you're not throwing your everything at it. Well, we are. If you go back uh, to when I was much younger, drug use in Scotland was uh, you know, worse than in many other parts of the UK. What we see now is a, an ageing cohort of people who've been taking drugs for some time with multiple uh, morbidities and that's, it's not necessarily the only factor but it's one of the factors uh, feeding that increase in drugs deaths. It's not acceptable. Uh, we have established a, a task force to look at the different things we have to do to, to address that. We've already announced, I announced it in our programme for government uh, in September, additional investment, substantial ad additional investment in uh, drug treatment services. We want to, and Glasgow City Council is leading the argument for having uh, assisted consumption facilities uh, to make uh, or to try to deal with deaths from drugs. It's not something we have the power to do right now in Scotland. So not say, me, Gav, it's central no, government. No, that, that's the point I was going to make. A lot of it is me, and that's why I've taken you through the things we are doing. I am not saying it is not my responsibility. To use a phrase from Mrs Thatcher, are you going to go on and on <laughs> until you win independence? Well, I, I hope to do that because I hope we're going to win independence soon. Um, hmm. And I think, I think we're closer to that than ever before. Am I going to tell people I've that heard the, you say that before of too. Of course you have. But I'm not, I haven't been around for that long. Actually, I have been around for quite a while. Um, look, I'm, I'm not the kind of leader that just tells people what they want to hear. I believe we are closer to it than ever before. I think we'll achieve it uh, soon. And I fully intend to lead, as long as my party and the country want me to be party leader and first minister, then I'm in Enjoying the job, it's challenging, it's a challenging time to be doing it in, uh, but I relish the challenges ahead. First Minister, thank you very much for talking to us.